This factory was built back in 1910. And our company started in 1895, so they have a lot of interest in this factory. This factory represents the Tampa cigar industry. Back in the day, in the 1920s and 30s, the Tampa cigar industry was at its peak. There are about 60 large-scale brick factories just like this one. And the city was making about 500 million cigars a year, which is more cigars than what America imports or every other country combined now on an annual basis. Back in the 1970s, approached the factory owner, Stanford Newman, our previous company president, and asked him if he would turn off the clock. You know, in the afternoon, it would ring once an hour, the bell would ring, and it would wake up her baby whenever she would put him down for a nap. So being a nice guy, he turned off the clock, and the next day, he had a line of cigar makers lined up around the block complaining they didn't know when to wake up for work, so they turned off the alarm clock. <laughs> We've been in this factory since 1954. It's always been a, been a cigar factory, and we're going to continue that legacy as long as possible. So, our company did not actually start in Tampa, it started in Cleveland, Ohio. We were started by a Hungarian Jewish immigrant named J.C. Newman. Very hardworking, self-disciplined guy. He taught himself English, he taught himself how to run a business, and then he learned how to make cigars. He started making cigars when he was 18, essentially, and by 21 years old, he had started his own business. Tampa had what was called the Havana Clear. We had a large Cuban immigrant population in the city and you would import Cuban tobacco from the port of Tampa. So you'd be making Cuban cigars while avoiding any sort of import tax or duty or anything like that. And that's why everybody came to Tampa to build a cigar factory to make cigars. And then you would use Henry Plant's railroad lines and ship them all over the country. Um, that's why Tampa is a cigar craft the world. He needed a, a distributor in America. So he set up a business partnership with Stanford Newman he said, you import all my cigars into America, you'd be my point of entry, and then in exchange I'll make whatever cigars you want in the Dominican Republic. This is where we process all the wrapped of tobacco we're going to use for machine-made and handmade cigars. Like I said, we're still using the basement the exact same way it was used 110 years ago with tobacco. If the humidity is too low, if there's not enough moisture in the air, the tobacco is going to dry out and crumble. If there's too much moisture in the air, if it's too high humidity, the tobacco is going to might, might get mold, right? I've seen this movie before. No, it's a real old under you. She's a dandy. So, who here is an out of towner and who here is from Tampa? Out of towner? Well, one of the things that always gets tossed around as far as like Tampa and Ebor mythology is that there are secret tunnels underneath the city, <laughs> which is kind of true. There are some smuggling tunnels. Because, you know, especially during Prohibition, you had to get alcohol into the city, and bootleggers would use those tunnels. Um, Ybor City had a lot of organized crime back in the day, especially in the 20s and 30s, and especially after the Great Depression. What happened, and this is related to the cigar industry, is that the cigar manufacturers realized the only way they're going to remain competitive on a national scale and not get bought out by the bigger guys, by the big tobacco trust, was if they started making machine-made cigars. You know, a hand, a uh, guy who makes cigars by hand can only do about 150 a day. A machine, however, can do like 5,000 a day. And so, overnight, basically, the cigar factory switched to machines, and like 15,000 people lost their jobs. Hmm. So they were out of work, they were desperate, a lot of them turned to crime, a lot of them got picked up by the mafias, you know, because there's the Cuban mafia, the Italian mafia, um, which we call the Traficante crime family. And cigar factories were big targets. They would get robbed quite frequently by bandits, and they had a lot of cash sitting around because you would go and buy the Cuban tobacco with cash. So this is our casing apartment here, right here. Casing refers to, we're gonna take the tobacco out of those boxes, out of those bales, and we're gonna begin putting moisture back into it. When we put moisture back into it, we've cased it. So that's what he's doing over here, and then he's gonna cover it with a tarp and the tar is going to force all the moisture into the tobacco and it's going to begin that rehumidification process. You know, like I showed you in that room, the tobacco has been dried out. So in order to use it for cigars, we've got to put moisture back into it. If you try to make cigars from this tobacco right now, it would rip. Um, so you've got to rehumidify it, make sure the tobacco is elastic, make sure it's soft, and that's when we're going to roll these cigars. So yeah, we're in a cigar making factory. And we're getting deeper and deeper and 
pretty cool uh, to see how it all works. Got a couple of people who are actually making them while we're walking through. So, that's the loud rooms. I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I don't want to disrupt the tour guide. See, it cuts the shape of the leaf, of the, of the wrapper out of the leaf. And all of this is left over. We call this cuttings or trimmings. And this one we're going to make short filler out of. Short filler is all of this shredded up into tiny little chunks of tobacco. And those little shredded bits are what's going to go inside of a short filler cigar. Sometimes people call it chop filler because you're chopping it up. But these machines are where we make the cigars every single day. And I'll show you how they work. So, the short filler gets shaken down into this measuring cup here. And this is the filler, this is the exact amount that's going to go in the cigar. And then it gets dropped down into this machine that dumps it out onto this rubber tray. And this rubber tray, we call it a Lieberman press because it does a bunching. It bunches together the, all the short filler into that binder. So what happens is a little piece of homogenous binder, that tobacco paper that I was telling you about, uh, where is it? Yeah. So this tobacco paper gets put onto here and put on the Lieberman press, and then it gets filled up with short filler tobacco. That's the homogenous binder. And then that's a little piece of ribbon to reinforce the head. So another thing about machine made cigars, they don't have a cap. Remember when I was showing you the caps down in the basement? Premium handmade cigars have a cap because the cigar maker is going to put another piece of the tobacco leaf on the back to close it up. <laughs> Machine made cigars, they don't have a cap. That's what the wrapper shape like. <laughs>